The film begins by showing the war in Afghanistan, where the U.S. Marine Force was fighting against Taliban soldiers. The U.S. Marine Force was overwhelmed by Taliban soldiers who launched several attacks in the war. In the end, the U.S. Marine Forces suffered defeat in the war. One of the soldiers who survived, Jake Atherton, was trying to save his captain, Tom Mason. He was seriously injured and trapped in the middle of a shooting. Shortly after, the U.S. Marines helicopter arrived, and they rushed to the helicopter to rescue themselves. Five years later, Jake decided to retire from the military and worked as a mechanic in an auto shop owned by a former gang member, Earl. Although he had a background as a soldier, Jake could do his job as a mechanic quite well, so he often got appreciation from his boss. After working all day, Jake came home and was greeted by his wife and son, who were very proud of him, because he always worked hard to make his family happy. The next day, Jake, who had just arrived at the auto shop for work, was shocked by the appearance of a group of Mexican gangsters who came to the place to collect on Earl's debt. However, Jake feuded with the Mexican gangsters and got into a fight. As a former soldier, Jake could easily defeat them until, finally, the leader of the Mexican gangster, Fresh, chose to leave the place while asserting that he would take revenge on Jake. After the gangsters left, Earl told Jake that he was a member of the gangsters. Deciding to quit the gangster group and start a new life, Earl was not completely free. Fresh and his men often came to threaten and blackmail him. Jake told Earl that he would try to help and solve his problems with the gangsters. In the evening, when Jake had just arrived at his house, he accidentally met Fresh in front of his house. With a scornful look, Fresh told him about an act of excruciating revenge. Upon saying that, Fresh rushed away from the place by driving his car. Jake was worried about his family, and he rushed into the house. However, Jake was shocked to see his wife and son were killed by Fresh and his gangsters. He looked so devastated at the death of his beloved family. Overwhelming by anger, Jake tried to find the existence of Fresh and his gangsters to get revenge. He finally found them at a nightclub, and without a second thought, he slaughtered Fresh's crew. Jake then went to Fresh, who tried to tell him something. But before Fresh revealed anything, Jake killed him. Jake was sent to prison for committing the slaughter and would serve a life sentence. A few months later, Mason visited Jake in prison and said he would help him get released. Jake appreciated Mason's good intentions, but he turned down his help because he had lost his purpose in life after his family died. Shortly afterward, Jake was visited by Sam Ramsey, who offered to help get him out of prison. But Jake again turned down the offer because he wanted to spend his life in prison. Disappointed with Jake's decision, Ramsey thought of another way to get him out of jail. In the evening, while Jake was sleeping, a group of people in black and wearing masks entered Jake's cell and kidnapped him. They then brought Jake before Ramsey, who informed him that he was amazed at Jake because he used to be a great soldier. Ramsey intended to recruit Jake to join his secret agency, Section 8. Jake initially declined the offer, but Ramsey convinced him to join his secret agency. Ramsey then took Jake to Section 8's headquarters. He told him that Section 8 was a secret organization set up by the United States government and tasked with a murderous mission against an anarchist group that caused trouble and terrorists threatening the country's sovereignty. Before Jake was formally recruited by Section 8, he had to take the test first against one of his seniors, Ajax. At first, Jake didn't fight when Ajax beat him up. However, Jake was instantly furious and hit him back when he alluded to his late family. He beat Ajax and was officially recruited to be a Section 8 member. A few days later, Jake would be on his first mission with a woman named Lisa, a Section 8 member. Lisa told Jake that her mission was to seize weapons designs from Castillo, an arms dealer who often sold weapons illegally. Furthermore, she informed Jake that Castillo would sell the weapon designs to the Russian gangsters and conduct the transaction in Mexico. She insisted Jake had to kill Castillo after getting the weapon design because Section 8's primary mission was to kill Castillo. Short story, Jake and Lisa arrive in Mexico and rush to an abandoned factory, where Castillo would make a transaction. She told Jake to sneak into the factory while she watched from a distance. When Castillo was negotiating with the Russian gangsters, Jake deliberately killed one of the guards so that the sound of his shots could be heard by them. Hearing the gunshots, Castillo's gangsters and the Russians assumed they had framed each other. They then pointed their guns at each other and tried to kill. After most of the members of the two groups were killed, Jake got out of his hiding place and took them all out. After killing Castillo, Jake headed for his car to retrieve Castillo's weapon designs. In the car, Jake saw two women who looked so scared. He assumed they might be prostitutes, so he kept them alive and rushed away. Upon arrival at Section 8's headquarters, Ramsey immediately called Jake and reprimanded him for choosing to keep both women alive. Jake argued that the two women were innocent while insisting that he would not kill an innocent man. Meanwhile, a man named Leonard Locke was seen entering a casino and rushing to the top floor. He was a hitman tasked with killing the casino owner, who was also a corrupt official. The guy tried offering him money so Locke wouldn't kill him, but Locke was not interested in the offer and instantly killed him. When he was about to leave the building, Locke was intercepted by the guards who attacked him, but he could easily defeat them and managed to escape from that place. 
The scene then turns back to Jake, who completed his first mission and returned home. As a member of Section 8, Jake occupied a relatively spacious and luxurious house of his former house. Jake found an old photo of himself inside the house while joining the U.S. Marine Force. The picture reminded Jake of Mason because only Jake and Mason survived their last mission in Afghanistan. Afterward, Jake met Lisa at a bar, where she said she's been interested in Jake since they first met, but he doesn't seem interested in her because she hasn't been able to forget her late wife. A few days later, Jake and the members of Section 8 were tasked with killing a corrupt senator, Jim Graham, and obtaining critical information that the senator was hiding. The next day, they finally arrived at the senator's campaign site. Graham was seen making a speech in front of his supporters when Jake snuck into the place. Shortly after, Jake and the members of Section 8 immediately attacked the senator's bodyguards guarding the site. Knowing of the attack, some bodyguards took the senator to a safer place. While Jake and the others were engaged in a shootout with the senator's bodyguards, Lisa stole important data and information from the senator's computer. Jake managed to kill the bodyguards in the car and corner Graham, who was trying to escape. Realizing that he couldn't escape the place, Graham begged Jake not to kill him while telling him he had a wife and children waiting for him at home. Upon hearing that, Jake worried and thought about letting the senator live. But then, Ajax fired a shot from a distance that instantly killed Graham. In the evening, Jack returned to his house. He cried out of frustration at the thought of his late son. Shortly, a group of men infiltrated his house to kill him. However, Jake soon realized their whereabouts and hurried away. He then visited Mason and told him about his involvement with Section 8. Mason said that Section 8 was not a secret government organization but a criminal organization that has always been an enemy of the government. Elsewhere, Ramsey was furious when he learned that Section 8 had failed to kill Jake while he was at his house. Fear that Jake would leak about Section 8, Ramsey told Lisa to call Locke and assign him to kill Jake. The next day, Jake accidentally met Alex, his son's friend who lived near his former house. He told Jake that he had seen some people in black watching Jake's house a few days before the murder. Upon hearing that, Jake wondered if Section 8 was involved in the murder of his family. At the same time, Locke arrived at the spot and fired at Jake, forcing him to flee immediately before getting more information from Alex. Because of the sound of gunshots fired by Locke, the police came to the place and surrounded him. However, Locke did not hesitate to kill the police officers who tried to get in his way. Locke lost track of Jake, then called Ramsey and told him that he had failed to kill Jake. Upon hearing that, Ramsey was angry and questioned Locke's reputation as a hitman who never failed to take the lives of his targets. Locke was irritated at being underestimated by Ramsey and determined to kill Jake. Meanwhile, Jake was holed up in Earl's auto shop and told Earl everything he's been through. Shortly after, Lisa and the members of Section 8 arrived at the site to conduct an ambush. Assisted by Earl, Jake could defeat several armed Section 8 members. He then fought fiercely against Ajax, who challenged him to a duel. Ajax got Jake in the corner and was about to kill him. But then, Lisa suddenly showed up and instantly killed Ajax. After they got rid of all the Section 8 members, Lisa revealed that she had been on Jake's side the whole time. Jake and Lisa then plot to kill Ramsey by sneaking into Section 8's base. Upon arrival at the base, Jake was shocked by the appearance of a Section 8 member who attacked and knocked him down. Shortly afterward, Jake woke up and realized Lisa had set him up. He asked Ramsey why he didn't just kill him. Ramsey said that he wanted to surprise Jake before he tortured him to death. The surprise that Ramsey meant was Mason's presence at Section 8's headquarters. He told Jake that Mason was part of Section 8. Besides, Ramsey revealed that he was the one who had told Fresh and his gangsters to kill Jake's family. He did it so he could recruit Jake into Section 8. However, Jake disappointed him because he always seemed worried about killing his targets, so Ramsey decided to eliminate Jake by killing him. After telling Jake everything, Ramsey and Mason went to another room to split the money from the sale of the weapons designs and the critical information they got from the killed targets. Mason then suggested to Ramsey that they kill Jake immediately because if he was left to live longer, then he might break free and slaughter them. Ramsey agreed and told Mason to kill Jake. Mason told Jake he did not know Ramsey was behind Jake's family's murder. Mason also revealed that he was a government agent undercover to spy on Ramsey and Section 8. He asked Jake to work together to kill Ramsey and Section 8. Upon hearing that, Jake finally believed what Mason had to say and agreed to work with him to kill Ramsey and destroy Section 8. They then attacked the members of Section 8 until only Ramsey and Lisa were left alive. While Ramsey was trying to offer some money to keep Jake from killing him, Lisa secretly snuck near Mason and managed to kill him. She then cornered Jake by pointing a gun at him, but the bullets in the gun were gone, so Jake's life could be saved. Jake and Lisa were involved in a fierce fight that Jake eventually won. Jake hurried off to chase Ramsey, who was trying to escape. After a pretty intense chase, Jake finally managed to corner Ramsey and kill him. In the evening, Jake was met by U.S. Attorney General Martin Savoy, who had assigned Mason to spy on Ramsey and Section 8. 
Savoy thanked Jake for helping Mason complete his mission of killing Ramsey and destroying Section 8. Savoy later informed that Ramsey was the former head of the FBI who formed Section 8 to blackmail corrupt officials and sell important United States government information to the country's enemies. Before leaving, Savoy gave Jake his business card and asked him to join a secret government organization, but Jake immediately turned down the offer. He returned to his house, surprised to find Locke waiting for him. He then told Locke that Ramsey was dead and asked him to leave his house immediately. But Locke ignored that because he wanted to kill Jake to fix his reputation as a hitman who never failed to kill his target. Jake and Locke then engaged in a fierce fight, in which Locke had better fighting skills than Jake and managed to overwhelm him. In the middle of the fight, Jake accidentally found a gun lying under the couch. He immediately took the gun and fired at Locke, killing him. The movie ends by showing Jake on his way somewhere while calling Savoy to let him know he's accepting the offer. The moral value we can learn from this film is never to engage with gangsters, which only throw us into endless misery and suffering.